Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are on to the storage accounts cheat sheet. This one is six pages long. I do not know why I did not break it up into more fine or fine tune or specific cheat sheets, but that's okay. We'll get our way through it here. It's all summarized for you here. So um, starting at the top here, Azure has five core storage services. You have Azure Blob, Azure Files, Azure Queues, Azure Tables, Azure Disks. Know the difference between these five. For Blob storage, there are two types of performance, standard and premium. Standard is when you're using hard disk drives. Premium is when you're using solid state drives. And you're going to get varied performance based on the access tiers. We'll see those in a moment here. Azure Storage supports three types of blobs. Lock blobs, append blobs, page blobs. Please take the time to read these and understand the difference. For blob storage, there are three types of access tiers. For standard storage, you got cool, hot, and archive. Going into detail, hot, data that is accessed frequently, uh, cool, data that's ac uh, accessed infrequent, uh, infrequently, and archive, data that's rarely accessed and stored for at least 180 days. For the account level tiering, any blob that doesn't have any explicit assigned tier infers the tier from the storage account accessing tier settings. For blob level tiering, you can upload a blob to the tier of your choice. Changing the tier happens instantly, uh, except when you are moving out of the archive. Then there's the concept of rehydration. This is when you're moving a blob out of an archive into another tier, and it could take several hours. Uh, for the blob lifecycle management, this is so you can create rule-based policies to, uh, to transition data to different tiers. After 30 days, it moves to cool storage. When a blob is uploaded or moved to another tier, it's charged at the new tier's rate immediately upon charge. When moving from a cooler tier, the operation is billed as a write operation to the destination tier. When the write operation is per 10,000 and the and the data writes is per gigabytes, charges of the destination tier apply. When moving to a hotter tier, the operation is billed as a read from the source tier, where the read operation for a per 10,000 and data retrieval per gigabyte charge for the source tier apply. Early detection charges for any blob moved out of the cool or archive tier may apply as well. Cool and archive early detection. Any blob is is moved into the cool tier. This is only for GPV2. Uh, is that's general purpose, right? Is is subject to a cool early detection period of 30 days. Any blob that is moved into the archive tier is subject to an archive early detection period of 180 days. This charge is prorated. There are multiple ways to move data into Azure Blob Storage. You got AZ Copy, Azure Storage Data Movement Library, Azure Data Factory. Blob Fuse, uh, Azure Data Box, Azure Import Export Service. You definitely want to know how to use Azure Copy. Not in the cheat sheet, but it's something you need to know in practice, okay? When you create a storage account, you need to choose a replication type. So primary region redundancy uh, is... Uh, uh, sorry, there's a bunch of different types of re replication types. Have we broken these into categories? So locally redundant storage, then you have zone redundant storage, then you have geo redundant storage, then you have geo zone redundant storage, and then there's the, the, the third tier of these, which is RAGRS and RAGRR. <laughs> GZRS, I got it, okay? And so there's a bunch of different variations here. You have to carefully look at all this and make sure you know the difference. Uh, now we're on to, uh, it was the third, <laughs> the third page. Azure Files is a fully managed file share in the cloud. A file share is a centralized server for storage that allows multiple connections to connect you, uh, to the file share. The network protocols use either SMB or NFS. When a connection is established, the file share's file system will be accessible in the spe a specific directory within your own directory true tree. This is known as mounting. You can back up your file shares with shared snapshots, read only incremental up to 200 snapshots per file share, retain backup for up to 10 years. Backups are stored within the file share. So if you delete if you delete your file share, you will delete your backup. Soft deletes prevent accidental deletion by turning on soft delete. It's going to be marked for deletion, retained for a period of time before it deletes. For store tiers, you got premium, transactional optimized, hot, cool. Uh, then for types of storage, uh, and this is GPV2, uh, deployed on either HHD or file storage, it's going to be deployed on SSD. For identity, you can use on-prem or manage via the ADAS, so that's uh, Azure Active Directory Domain Services, or using a store uh, a store account key. That's where you have a username and password, the username being the storage account name, the password being the account key. 
For Azure files, they are accessible inside or outside your AWS account from wherever or anywhere via storage account via public endpoint. SMB connects on port 445. Remember that I highlighted it for a reason there for you. Your organization may need to uh, unblock this port so you can mount your file share. For encryption, we have encryption at rest, as with, which is Azure Storage uh, Service Encryption, SSC, and encrypted in transit using SMB 3.0. Uh, protocol there with encryption or HTTPS. Azure File Sync is a service that allows you to cache Azure file shares on your on-premise Windows Server or Cloud VM. I don't remember seeing uh, super detailed questions on Azure File Sync, except for the fact that you might need to know how to set it up, uh, but not conceptually like user use cases and stuff. So that one's that's why it's so short there. I had to take a drink. <laughs> it's just too many, too many slides. Azure Import Export Service is used to uh, securely import large amounts of data to Azure Blob Storage and Files. You have two options for shipping drives on import. Use your own disk drives or use the Microsoft provided drives. For the Microsoft provided drives, you can do five encrypted solid state drives known as Azure Data uh, Box Disks with 40 terabytes total capacity per order to your data center through a regional a carrier. To prepare, you'll... Uh, to prepare your drive, you'll need to use the following, use the command line, a WA import export tool. I put the details in here because you, this I saw this on the exam. So I just want, in case you see it, I want you to know all these steps. Prepare your disk drives that are shipped for import, copying your data to the drive, encrypt the data using a BitLocker and generate the, uh, the drive journal files using the uh, during the import creation. Help identify numbers uh, of drives needed for the export job. There are two versions of the WA import export, version one and version two. One is for blobs, uh, two is for Azure files. The W import export tool is only compatible with Windows 64 bit, uh, so you're not using Linux here, okay? For export jobs, you can only export from Azure blob. You can uh, ship up to 10 empty drives uh, to Azure per job. You can create export jobs and the data is loaded onto these drives and shipped back to you. Um, and then uh, this might be the last page, I'm not sure, we'll see here in a moment, but uh, we have shared access signatures, SAS is a URI that generates restricted access rights to Azure storage resources. Share the U URI to the grant uh, client temporary access to specific set of permissions, type of shared access signatures. You have account level SAS, this is access to resources in one or more of the storage services. You have service level SAS access to single uh, to a single storage account by using the storage account key, user delegated SAS, access to storage account using Azure AD credentials, limited only to blob or containers. Microsoft considers this method best practice for accessing via SAS. A shared access signature comes in different formats. You got ad hoc SAS, you have uh, service SAS with a uh, stored access policy. And there we go. So we're all the way through there. Uh, that was a lot of slides and uh, you know, hopefully you can retain all that information for the exam.